I'm not gonna lie. What gear you choose to work with for your underwater videos is important. And while your camera is certainly the most important piece of kit you own, lenses are a close second. I've been on a decade long journey trying to figure out the best lenses to use for underwater videography. And today I'm not only sharing my results, but also the reasons why I use the lenses that I do. So grab a cup of coffee and let's start. First off, I wanna talk about primes. Prime lenses are simply put lenses that can't do any zoom whatsoever. They are fixed lenses. And that might sound a bit restricting, and yes it is. But primes usually have other benefits over zoom lenses. They might be better in low light or have other special features like macro capabilities. They cover set focal ranges and are purpose built to perform excellent in that specific focal range. Over the years I've owned a lot of lenses, including a few primes. The first prime lens I ever bought was the Sigma 10mm f2.8 fisheye for Canon, which I used for many years. I discovered through using it that I'm not a huge fan of fisheye for underwater videography, as it doesn't fit that well with my shooting style, which involves a lot of movement and foreground elements. The only prime lens currently in my lens lineup is this tiny little thing from Olympus. This is the only micro four third lens that I own, and it's a 60mm f2.8 macro lens, making it roughly 120mm full frame equivalent focal. So basically the prime lenses that I've owned for underwater use are at the very edges of the spectrum, super wide and macro. And this is usually where you see primes being utilized by underwater shooters. Not exclusively though, I know shooters that use fast primes in the 14 to 35mm range for more background separation and glorious bokeh, but they are mostly the exception to the rule. Now on the flip side, we have zoom lenses that can cover multiple focal ranges. Compared to prime lenses, they are often more restricted when it comes to their maximum aperture and can also suffer from other drawbacks such as reduced optical performance throughout the various parts of the zoom range. Now in the search of the perfect lenses, I've owned a silly amount of zoom lenses over the years, particularly in the wide part of the spectrum. Don't ask me why, but I've owned three copies of this zoom lens at various points in time. The zoom lenses I currently own, however, are pretty sweet and without a doubt my favorite is the one I'm filming myself with right now, the Sigma 18-35mm f1.8. Yes, it has a constant aperture of f1.8 which is crazy for a zoom lens. I love it dearly. The other zoom lens I currently use on the water is the Tokina 11-16mm f2.8 which I might upgrade soon to the new 11-20mm lens from the same company. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm kind of making a case for zoom lenses in this video. That's not to say primes don't belong in your underwater housing, they definitely do. But due to the environment that we dive in, I tend to stick mostly to zooms. Now the main reason for this is quite simple. You never know what you're gonna see on the water. So let me know if this sounds familiar. You go diving with a wide angle lens and only macro subjects turn up. Okay, so next day you go with your macro lens. The sharks are everywhere. Okay, this is an extreme example, but I think you understand where I'm going with this. If I'm diving with my old Sigma 10mm fisheye lens, I'm just shooting wide for the day, that's it. If instead I strap on an 11-20mm to 20 millimeter zoom lens, now I can capture medium-sized subjects too. So instead of missing out on all these other subjects, I'm getting it all. Now there might be exceptions to this, you might be in the water only to capture whale sharks. Okay, so you don't really need a zoom for that, but I'm talking about all those other dives that we do. The ones that we do the most of, where we might have an idea of what we might see, but anything could happen. And you don't want to be restricted by your tools in a situation like that. Now if you talk to the land dwelling counterparts of the video world, they might say I'm full of crap. Of course primes are superior to zooms, but it's important to remember that we work in a highly restrictive environment. If I'm heading out to do two dives off a small boat, whatever lens I choose in the morning is the one I'm going to be using for the day. At least I'm not brave enough to switch lenses on a small boat. Maybe you are. And you might be heading out to do two dives with whale sharks, but weather and conditions could change and you could find yourself diving elsewhere, shooting different size subjects. So choosing a good zoom lens can also be a far safer choice in many situations instead of gambling on a prime. Another great argument for zoom lenses is the ability to change composition. 
When shooting wildlife, you can't always swim closer or further away as your subject might be unpredictable or the visibility can restrict how far you can see. So being able to punch in with the zoom lens can be invaluable and also give you a lot of creative options. Who doesn't love getting the full size shot of the whale shark and then a close up of the eye in the very next moment? And also don't forget that zooming in gives you more subject separation through depth and that can give your shots a completely different look altogether. So considering that I'm such a big fan of zoom lenses, what are my recommendations? Now most companies have their own versions of these focal ranges, but for example, we have the popular Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye, Canon 11 to 24 millimeter for full frame, or the trusted 16 to 35 millimeter lenses. For crop sensor cameras, you have great options like the Tokina 10 to 17 millimeter fisheye or the Tokina 11 to 20. What I like about all these lenses is that they offer both ultra wide angle field of view and the ability to zoom in to capture smaller subjects or do different compositions. When it comes to fisheye versus rectangular lenses, it's really just a matter of taste. Let me know in the comments what you like best. Personally, I prefer rectangular lenses for underwater video. Then we get to the next range of zooms where we find my trusted Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. Anything that sits in the 24 to 105 millimeter full frame range is interesting. You could even go further. One of my other favorite zoom lenses from way back when was the 15 to 85 millimeter from Canon, which was something like a 24 to 135 millimeter lens. It had pretty good IS and was very sharp. It was crazy flexible. But having anything in this range works great. And don't forget, 24 millimeter is wide. It's not ultra wide, but I actually really enjoy working with the 24 millimeter focal range for many subjects, even larger ones. In conclusion, and to support my slightly clickbaity title, using zoom lenses underwater will improve your videos because they allow you to capture more varied subjects and do different compositions. Having shot variety is key to making your edits more interesting, and I also argue that shooting consistently through various focal ranges helps you improve your skill set. I hope all this might help you in choosing what lens to get for your underwater setup, and I hope that you're enjoying these educational videos that I'm putting out. If you are, go check out this one next.